try and pick up where I left off. Let me see if I can try and... I think I'm supposed to go around somewhere. Of course, I had to go this way. Let me. Oh, whatever. Doesn't matter. method and then it, it doesn't matter. At least I know where I need to go now and I didn't have to look up a guy or anything. Just in case I got super lost. Before I go there, let me see if there's anything around here that I can pick up, any materials or money or some sorts. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please, be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane. A nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. Well, that was pointless. Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles, and the arid hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How 
how she survives. Whom she may know. Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? Did you know the Mute Florist is a member of a secret society? No, I didn't. But I thank you for this information, sir. For it only enriches the mystery surrounding the precious Camellia. Are you not curious? Is there not more you wish to know? That girl has not an ounce of malice in her. Whatever she may be hiding, it's certain to be for the benefit of most, if not all. I fear you are a hopeless romantic, Mr. Nethercott. Guilty as charged, Dr. Reed. I'll leave you alone, sir. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Hello again, miss. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Very well. Goodbye, then. I still have questions about that Darius fellow. I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. Okay, uh, goodbye, I'm not Mr. Dark. Farewell. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see Dorothea. This though. Oh, 
funny business now. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Razvan Vasily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Aspirin and salicin, you say? Why not some warm milk and a kiss on the cheek? Where are the quinine salts? Tried buying, borrowing, even stealing. There's none to be found, doctor. He's not convulsing, he's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalp! Hand me that scalp! What can I do, Doctor? I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy? Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Don't question me, nurse. I need a drain. Now. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, Doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? I... I can't see. I must... first suture the artery. Find the wound, the source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor. A dose of epinephrine, now. Yes, Doctor. We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? 
everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. to test my bedside manners. To what do I owe this courtesy? I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? Nurse Crane, there is no question that the work you've done here is extraordinary, but this dispensary is incapable of coping with the outbreak. It's only a question of days before the situation at hand will overwhelm us. I cannot allow it. It's my duty to put an end to this immediately. <laughs> did what was right. For in the end, I saved lives and you took them. But we had so much in common, Doctor. Don't you see that? Oh well, I don't care. It's locked. The flu killed this one.
Okie dokie. Actually, I wonder. Hello, Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Dr. Reed. Come on in. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. But I still see a dark future ahead for my people. Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have told my sons and daughters. I'm an old dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family? Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man, for sure, but a very poor writer. <laughs> so Dorothy's real name is not Crane? Like myself and many people in this area, Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. That they had gone and, you know, killed her by draining her of her blood, but, you know, I do believe it's for the best. Of course, I could be wrong. Uh, it was this way. Yes, yeah, this way. Good quality. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. Protection against malevolence and trickery. Wait, where'd that other guy go? Did... 
journalist dude. Oh, there he is. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Christina Popper claims she sells her body because she can't find any other work. Do you believe her? Of course I do. Her story is exactly what I want my readers to understand. We live in an intolerant and divided nation. Do you think things will ever change, Mr. Darby? I believe the situation can only improve. And now that women can vote, I'm convinced things will change. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. I served in France. Our top priority must be to put an end to this butchery. This war must stop now. Sir, streets are a battlefield too. An invisible and untold war is going on, and it must be stopped. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Oh, that was a waste. Good evening, Mr. Nethercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, doctor. And my family despises me. I'll leave you alone, sir. Hello again, miss. I know you understand. This. Camellia, I know you work for... Hmm. Tell me about Rich. Human blood. 
Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. I have to take care of that stupid guy with the frickin' keeps closing in on me. I wish you could reload a little faster, I mean, I don't understand, you would think you could reload just a little faster. I mean, I know there's an upgrade for it, but I don't want to use that upgrade. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. I'm taking this guy out first because he's pissing me off the most. <laughs> Oh, 
that fool is out of the way. Oh, come on! Just when I finally got one of the bosses out, this, this is just, this is a stupid boss fight. <sighs> Alright, screw this nonsense. I don't care what happens, I'm going to start leveling up more after this is done. Once I finish this mission, end the stream, do some leveling, and then move on, because this is, this is getting ridiculous. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. Die for me. Burn it, boys! I fucking love of all things. Oh, come on! Just... Screw it, just kill me. I don't care anymore. <sighs> this sucks. You know, I'm gonna try and go back to the hideout and level up because I wanted to do this without. <sighs> I have all I can stand about this BS right now.
how lovely that there are no frickin' mice for me to chomp on to get get my blood meter up. There was another way for me to level up instead of just having to go to the hideout, rest on the bed, and then just... Well, at least getting rid of Dorothy or Dorothea or whatever gave me a lot of experience points, so the least I can do is level up get this crap over with.
Please come on, stupid controller. Maybe at some point in the game there'll be a, sh a better melee weapon than this machete. I could use it. I could use any. Uh, <laughs> can't talk with the crap. I could use one of the other ones, but rather use the machete one. Let's try this crap again. Maybe not screw up? It's only some stinking rats for me to chomp. Oh, now there's rats for me to chomp on. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is despicable. I can't believe I'm doing this. This time, human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. Really pissing me off now. Sit your stupid thank you. Where's that other idiot?
doesn't like fire, does it? Die, Vernon! Another one of these idiots. already. Stupid need to summon reinforcements over and over and over. I would ask you to avert your eyes, sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. You killed him. He trusted you. And you killed him. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. So in the end, the accusation was true, wasn't it? The situation is somewhat awkward nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. The case is closed permanently. You will not be bothered anymore by the woman. And who was this woman? If you must know, she worked under my employ as Nurse Crane. But I'll wager that's not what will be written on her gravestone. You killed her? Is that what you consider discretion and diplomacy, Dr. Reed? I did what I thought was best, and acted accordingly. You will learn that trust is a rare and precious commodity in the Immortals' world, my young doctor. And your actions have not induced me to offer you my support. I bid you farewell. For now, my lady. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. I'm so lucky to have Dr. Reed, you know. I met him in New York once. If only there were more of us, with less resignation and more determination. that took just to do this stupid crap. Ooh, that stupid boss fight. that's over and done with for now I'm just gonna go ahead and call here I really needed to finish that
That mission where I had to find that last dude. So that's all for the time being. And sorry for the anger. Just again, that boss fight really sucked. And on that note, goodbye.